Paul, are you uh, next up to talk about why trees matter? Thanks, Carolyn. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Paul Johannes. I'm with the Green Space Alliance of Canada's Capital. So we're a small nonprofit volunteer organization dedicated to protecting and preserving green space in Ottawa Gatineau. We've been doing this since 1997, I guess. So we've been around a while. And our work is really advocacy work, uh, working with others. It's called an alliance. So we try to work with other organizations in the same domain. Um, and uh, we're here, I guess, this morning as, uh, as speaking for the trees part of this uh, uh, equation. Um, because green space for us is all green, uh, whether it's surface greenery, various types, uh, woodlands, uh, meadows, uh, parks, uh, wetlands, etc. But higher up is also the tree canopy and trees. And for sure, trees in an urban concept uh, context is uh, the most uh, uh, top of mind uh, issue that we hear from residents uh, in uh, in dealing with threats to green space. Uh, threats to trees is uh, always uh, right up there. So trees in our neighborhoods have always been uh, important to residents. Uh, they beautify our streets. Uh, they provide shade. Uh, habitat for birds and other wildlife. Um, and for many people, uh, trees provide a sense of connectedness uh, with nature. Um, and research has shown that just being around trees is good for our mental health. And uh, more recent research, in fact, shows that there's a positive effect of trees on physical health, too. Uh, so there's plenty of good reasons to want to have trees around or to be around trees. Um, but in our, our time of climate change, as Rob was mentioning, uh, trees take on an even more important role. Um, they don't only provide shade immediately under the canopy, but they actually cool the areas around them. So it's, it's like a mitigation strategy to have trees and to maintain trees uh, in, in the event of warmer climate. Uh, trees manage uh, rainwater uh, in storm events uh, and in the event that we're going to be getting more frequent and more heavier rain uh, by intercepting uh, rainfall in the foliage, uh, absorbing and filtering water as it infiltrates into the soil and holding stream banks in, a, in place with their roots, helping against uh, flooding. Um, and then maybe more importantly, trees remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. I mean, they, they, that, that's, that's part of their, that's, that's how they live, basically. They uh, chemical process through photosynthesis to actually take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, use it for their own tissue growth, carbon growth within the tree itself. And the side benefit of that, well, for us, is that they release oxygen, uh, which is fundamental to all of us. So there, there's uh, plenty of good reasons to value trees psychologically, from a health perspective, from just a value and beauty perspective, uh, and for all of these uh, so-called ecosystem services that trees provide. Um, so these kinds of benefits apply citywide, but they also apply neighborhood-wise. In fact, a lot of these benefits are very local. Uh, they, they, they kick in, in in a very local way. Uh, but they also only kick in once a certain threshold is achieved, once there's enough trees around. Like a single tree in the middle of a city block uh, isn't going to do a lot of good for a lot of people. Um, so we need to be thinking about the sort of the population of trees, the, the grouping of trees that together provide benefits. Um, and a good way to, to think about that is, is the measurement of the, uh, of the coverage of tree canopy uh, in an area. Um, and, and so that's basically just a, you know, a percentage of a given area that is covered by the crowns of trees in that area. And research has shown that the benefits that we've described above here are, are sort of kick in in a significant way where they actually start to make a difference when 40% of an area is covered by tree canopy. So the city in the new official plan has set a 40% target for Ottawa's tree canopy. So for the urban area of Ottawa, the urban area of Ottawa is 
the area that includes all the suburbs, Orleans, Barhaven, Canada, Riverside South, but as well the Greenbelt and also everything inside the Greenbelt. So that's the urban area of Ottawa. Um, so there's a 40% target set in the official plan for canopy cover in that area. Uh, but it's stated as a general uh, tar uh, coverage for the entire area. So, uh, so for example, the green belt, you know, being tree covered in many places uh, provides quite a lot of that 40%. Um, and, it, and so you could still have neighborhoods with very low tree coverage and the city would still meet its 40% canopy cover. So we're trying to have that uh, idea of having canopy cover up to 40% right at the neighborhood level because, as I said, the benefits are, are local. So um, how to get there, well, how do we, you know, how do we, how, do, how will the city get there? How do we get there in terms of uh, managing this canopy cover? Uh, in a way, we really have to think of the urban part of the city covered with trees. Well, what we have here is an urban forest. We need to manage this urban forest in the same way that forests are managed in, 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 uh, in sort of a harvesting sense uh, out in, in a rural area. Um, we have a forest to manage uh, in an urban sense here in the city. Um, so we have to think about, well, what is it then that's going to take, you know, what do we lose trees to? Well, illness, disease, uh, or just old age. Trees have a much longer lifespan than most, you know, than humans in general. Um, but they do come to the, an end of life stage. And so uh, managing the tr removal of trees as that happens in our population of trees. Uh, but there has to be replacement as well, so that we need to manage the replacement of those trees. Um, and also, and, and, and a big cause, uh, in addition to... Uh, uh, illness, it, you know, we have pests, we have invasive species coming in and, and destroying many species of trees. Uh, but on an ongoing basis, we also have development. Road development, ILRT development, lots of tree loss to that, uh, but also residential development in neighborhoods. Um, and so we're always dealing with these threats to trees. Um, and we have to work together really to try and come up with a way of minimizing this loss or at least having in place plans to continuously manage this urban forest as to make so as to maintain it and reach and keep that 40% target that we're trying to achieve. Um, now there's a lot of pressure on that because this same official plan uh, is calling for more density and and we're in a, we're kind of in a squeeze because we support that too. It makes sense to have development be denser, uh, again, from a climate change perspective, because if we don't build in, we're going to be building out. We'll be building, we'll be expanding the urban boundary, we'll be eating up more rural green space, we'll be losing more trees in the rural area. Uh, so it's a balance between those two things. If we want to uh, build more densely, which we do from a climate change perspective, but at the same time, the pressure is there on trees with more development through densification. There's going to be more pressure on trees. Well, how do we how do we preserve the trees in the context of densifying at the same time? And, and it's not one or the other. We really have to do both. So we need to come up with strategies, policies, processes, information and working together and education to achieve that. And it has to be something that's not, it has to be something that's kind of so good, so popular, so well done, that it has lasting power. That it's, because we need to maintain this like for a 25 year period. We're in a climate emergency. We need to really do this stuff in a very serious way over the next 25 years. And we can't push it off and we can't just be doing half measures all the time. Uh, we have to really have a plan that's strong and that has staying power. We have to get to a place where uh, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're not caught being too late to respond to something. We have to start now and we have to keep it up over that period. So the instruments that we have, you know, the city has uh, 
uh, brought in place a new tree bylaw, became effective January of this year. Um, uh, they did very good stakeholder consultation on the development of that bylaw. They've, they're putting a lot of faith in that bylaw. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're hopeful, but we're also uh, going to uh, verify and follow the application of this bylaw to see how well it's working. It's early, early days, but now we're starting to see cases where uh, development applications, where committee adjustment uh, applications are, are going through this process and we're, we want to assess the extent to which the trees are in fact being preserved where they can be and how much of the tree loss are we still getting through the development applications. Um, the other thing is that the city has implemented or has adopted an urban forest management plan and this is a 20-year plan uh, again with very good stakeholder involvement in the development of that plan uh, and if it is carried out and funded uh, then we have another very good vehicle, another very good tool to uh, uh, hopefully achieve the outcomes that we're looking for. So that's kind of the, the tree side of things uh, in this, in this uh, topic for today. Um, I'm not, I haven't been really following my time here. I don't know if I have too much time or not enough time. Where are we? Um, we're, we're good, Paul. 